latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 7th. Remarkably, we have a lot of systems active today compared to the previous day. Post Tropical Cyclone Ernesto and Vest 98L, both of those in the Atlantic, and in the East Pacific we have Tropical Storm 5E and Invest 96E. It's day 189 of the year so far, and with the formation of 5E, that bumps the total number up to 32 tropical storms this year. In the Atlantic, tropical, post-tropical cyclone Edward, I should say, is moving speedily off toward the, towards the northeast, towards, towards Europe right now. It is just turned post-tropical with 45 mile per hour winds, and NVS 98L is located over the southeastern US, and has a 40% chance of development over the next few days as it moves or could move off of the eastern Atlantic and develop into a tropical cyclone. Some models are on board with that forming. In the East Pacific, we have two areas of interest, a 10% area of interest and a 20% area of interest, as well as Tropical Storm 5E. 5E could become quite a significant hurricane. We are currently forecasting a peak of 110 miles per hour, just shy of major hurricane intensity, in around four days' time as the storm pushes off towards the west. The 20% area of interest in the specific does look rather good, so that could form over the next few days. In the Western Pacific, to surprise, as we are in July, which is typically an active month for the basin, there's absolutely nothing active, and there's nothing on the radar for the next few days. The same can't be said for the North Indian Ocean, however. There is an interesting feature rolling off the western coast of India, we're going to tell that imagery here in a moment and that we're currently giving a 40% chance of development as that pushes off towards the west, and that could develop into a brief tropical storm. The southern hemisphere, to everyone's amazement, nothing is active, and that will probably remain that way for a few days. This is a look at Tropical Storm 5E right now, as it pushes off towards the west. It looks rather good, ASCAT got winds of at least 40 knots, so it could be stronger than what we are currently staying right now, 40 miles per hour, 1,006 millibars. And it will probably become our next hurricane as that moves off towards the west. That will be, probably become uh, the first hurricane of the season as well. Looking at the North Atlantic, this is how it is looking currently. You can see the trail of Edward up toward the top of the screen right now as well as Invest 98L, which is looking pretty good as having collective blowups near its center as that's, as it does push off towards the east slowly, dropping he heavy rainfall amounts off the east coast, and that could develop into a tropical storm as it moves off towards the east. The outer bands of 98L, as shown as in this imagery, are producing some widespread thunderstorms over Florida, as well as a large trail behind it leading towards parts of Louisiana and Texas where heavy rainfall is also falling in relation to the system. Down in the southern, southern Gulf of Mexico and into the Bay of Campeche, you can see some dry air starting to arrive, which will probably inhibit tropical cyclone development down there. Looking into the eastern Pacific, the 20% area of interest in the central Pacific is looking really good. It's got some spin to it, and ASCAT has gotten winds of around 30 miles per hour in it. It's not close to tropical depression intensity, but we could be seeing some tropical cyclone genesis in the Central Pacific over the next few days. The same cannot be said for the 10% area of interest though. In the Western Pacific, the same has continued as it was previously. Uh, frontal activity continuing over part of China into Japan as well as over the southern Japanese islands. There is quite a flare of thunderstorms east of Luzon and the west of the Marian Islands. That probably won't lead to tropical cyclone formation as nothing is on the radar here over the next few days, but the basin remains quiet and we hope that it remains that way. This is a look at the South Pacific right now. There is some thunderstorm activity blowing up near Vanuatu and over Fiji, leading to heavy rainfall over there and potentially some flash flooding and landslides over there. However, tropical cyclone development is not forecast over the next few days. Here's the Indian Ocean. The Bay of Bengal remains rather quiet at this time with some thunderstorms trying to blow up in the eastern Bay of Bengal. But in the Arabian Sea, you can see that little disturbance trying to emerge off of the coast of India. That could develop into a tropical cyclone. It's got decent spin to it, and it's got some blur of convection in it, so that could become our next storm this week. 
Having a look at the sea surface temperatures now, uh, the Western Pacific is warming up quite nicely, as well as the Indian Ocean. However, in the Atlantic, sea surface temperatures are going extremely well above normal for this time of the year. That will probably lead to a busy season there. The same cannot be said in the Eastern Pacific where a La Nina is developing, which will lead to colder waters there. On this day back in 1986, we had a Category 5 Super Typhoon Peggy was active on this day, peaking with winds of 175 miles per hour and a pressure in the 880s. And we also did have a dying East Pacific Tropical Storm, unfortunately, Tropical Storm Darby, after peaking with winds of 45 miles per hour. So these are the names on the naming list. In the Atlantic, we have just had Eduard. The next name will be Faye. Couldn't be seen that too long in the distant future. As well as Gonzalo. In the East Pacific, Christina will probably get named in a few hours. And after that, the next two names will be Douglas and Elida. In the Central Pacific, we could be seeing Hone on the radar in the next few days, as well as the next name after that would be Iona. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Senlaku and Hagupit. Those two systems aren't on the radar for the next few days, luckily. In the North Indian Ocean, it is Gatti and Nivar, with the new names pulling out there this year. In the Southern Hemisphere, the same old, same old. Uh, the next name in the Australian region is Imogen, followed by Joshua. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it is Alicia, followed by Bongoyo on the new naming list there. And in Fiji, it's Yolanda. That's the next name over there. You can follow Force 13's outlets. You can check out our new Cyclone Tracker on our website, force-13.com forward slash Cyclone Tracker. You can also follow us on youtube.com forward slash force13. Subscribe if you haven't. You can follow us on Facebook for more updates on there, as well as Twitter. We also do publish updates on there as well. You can become an ultimate fan of our YouTube channel to see the full list of YouTube benefits. Visit youtube.com forward slash form13 forward slash join. With a special thanks to our ultimate fans and our patrons this month as they continue to bring funds towards our way. You can also check out our growing merch store at store.force13.com as well. It continues to grow to this day. You can also check out our Discord server using the link in the description below.